Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Rob passed along to me a story that he knew would catch my attention. I would enjoy reading. And I think you might also because it involves a topic we've discussed many times here on this channel. And that is the use of the phrase VIN number or PIN number or ATM machine. <laughs> I don't actually use most of those, but I will admit to occasionally saying VIN number and then saying vehicle identification number and then trying to use the word VIN for the rest of the, uh, the video. And of course, it's not a word, it's an acronym for those of you who are going to correct me on that. And what I'm talking about, of course, is the idea that there are people out there who freak out uh, when somebody says VIN number. And it's an overreaction when it's spoken. When it's written, I agree, because people can reread stuff, but they cannot re-listen to stuff that easily. I understand you could rewind the video and watch to see what I said, but if I'm talking, and I'll just say VIN, and out of context, the, con, you know, the, 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 the acronym VIN doesn't catch everyone's ear the same way. So occasionally, for clarity purposes, I'll say VIN, and then I'll say number, vehicle identification number, make sure people understand that. And I got a nasty email just this morning about something I had said, which was grammatically incorrect. And it was the kind of thing that if I was writing, and I write a lot of stuff, I've written some books, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of columns have been published on jalopnikandroadtrack.com. Um, uh, I do write grammatically correct there because it matters. But if you're speaking extemporaneously, as I am now, I'm not using a script. <laughs> I know that comes as a surprise to some of you. There is no script before me. I do have an article in front of me I will read in a moment, but I'm not using a script. So sometimes I get halfway through a sentence and realize that's not as clear as it could be, and then I'll, I'll change course mid-sentence. That's grammatically incorrect also because I stopped mid-sentence. So, you know, the grammar police and the grammar Nazis just need to just take their grammar Nazi hats off and, and, and listen when someone's talking. And if you want to break out the grammar Nazi red pen when someone's writing, go right ahead. But, but the people who complain too much about these kinds of things really need hobbies other than complaining on YouTube. So the funny thing is that Rob pointed out to me as an article from National Public Radio, or NPR Radio as we like to call it. Uh, and it was published back uh, in 2015, but it's, it's as timely now as it was then. And uh, Mark Mehmet wrote the article. Rob sent it to me. And the headline is, Do You Suffer From RAS Syndrome? And so he jokingly writes, at her favorite gourmet market last week, Corva went to the ATM machine, inserted her card, squinted at the LCD display, entered her PIN number, and withdrew cash to pay for her RAS syndrome therapy. RAS is Redundant Acronym Syndrome. And that's the actual phrase that someone has given to this idea that there is an acronym, and then people, to clarify it, say the word that is the last letter of the acronym. PIN number, VIN number, ATM machine. So for instance, the START Treaty, you recall that was a big deal a few years back, is the acronym for Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. So of course that would be the START Treaty, which would be the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty Treaty. Uh, and again, if you just said START out of context, people go, what's that? What's the treaty? The START Treaty. And of course it is a treaty called START. So... Uh, if there was a sense that adding the word treaty helped the listener understand what you're talking about, the redundancy would be a relatively minor mistake. And I would argue it's not even a mistake. Because uh, the only people tripping on it are the ones who are simply trying to point out mistakes. That's what they do for a living. That's what they think they do for a living. It's, 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 it's you know, they chase their tails all day long. Uh, but he said, Mark Mehmet said that listeners do notice, and of course listeners to NPR would. <laughs> Notice when we insert redundant words, they point out that uh, ATM, the last letter, is, of course, machine, or liquid crystal display LCD. The last letter, the D, is a display. So when you see an LCD display, it's, it's redundant. So some listeners, he says, uh, redundancies are minor, and, and, and otherwise, some of them say that they are, are, are a problem with a story that would have been perfect if not for that weird misusage there <clears throat> of the redundant acronym syndrome. So uh, Mark points out that the Oxford dictionaries, I assume related to the Oxford English dictionaries, in their guidance suggest that you should avoid redundant expressions because sometimes it can give the impression that you don't really understand the meaning of the words you're using. And I've actually had people say that, go, Steve, you don't know what vehicle identification number is? Yes, I know. I, I, I've, I've talked about it. I, obviously, I know. 
I've written books on cars. I've written articles on cars. I've talked about VINs ad infinitum, ad nauseum. <laughs> AD. No, I'm joking. Um, obviously, I know what they are. My concern is that when I'm talking the way I talk, really, really fast, when I'm talking and I stick the word VIN in there, the acronym, that someone's going to go, huh? And by the time they finish saying, huh? I'm three words down the road. So um, he points out that we do benefit if we eliminate unnecessary words if what we're talking about is still understandable. Because he says doing that makes room for other information and we're squeezing more into tight space. Yeah, editing. That's the whole point behind editing. You, you remove the, the fluff. You, you, you make it more compact. But of course, like I said, speaking language is different than writing language. Um, <clears throat> precision writing and editing, as Mark Mehmet says, are important tools of our trade. And he's, of course, talking about <clears throat> speaking on NPR radio. <laughs> but then he points out that there is, in fact, a website that lists the redundant acronym phrases that are most commonly heard. And this is on a website called nanday.com, N-A-N-D-A-Y.com, nanday.com. A redundant acronym phrase is a phrase containing an acronym plus a word or phrase such that when the acronym is expanded, the phrase would then contain a redundancy. Best illustrated by ATM machine. Uh, and jokingly, RAP phrase means redundant acronym phrase phrase. So the term rap phrase was coined in 1985 and first appeared on the internet in 1995. The phenomenon was later described using other terms such as RAS syndrome, coined in 2001, or PNS syndrome, which is the pin number syndrome syndrome. <laughs> Following is a list of phrases which are or have been used, such as AC current, because the C, of course, is current, ATM machine, DAT tape, Digital audio tape. But again, out of context, if I said, yeah, I picked up a DAT. You picked up what? DAT? DC current. HIV virus. IRA account. But then again, if it's not the IRA account, there's other IRAs out there. LAN network. LCD display. PIN number. RF frequency. SALT talks. Remember, there's the START treaty and the SALT talks. And, of course, the UPC code, the UPC code, the Universal Product Code code. Less common ones, uh, like the AFC conference in football, uh, an ARM mortgage, um, looking for ones that I recognize, CPI index, the Consumer Price Index index, DC Comics. <laughs> Go to a comic convention and Every time you hear someone say DC Comics, correct them and say, hey, you're being redundant. Um, DOS system. Which system does your computer use? The DOS system, which is, of course, a disk operating system. System. <laughs> uh, IBM machines. Of course, IBM is international business machines. So an IBM machines would be IBM machines, international business machines, machines. IRC chat. Remember that? Internet relay chat chat. Uh, the ISBN on a book. The ISBN number is the International Standard Book Number. Number. The ISBN number. And, and you know, it's funny because I actually <clears throat> know all about these because I've published books. But if you grab a book such as Cold Mountain by Charles Frazier. Good book. This is the ISBN back here. But the ISBN also has the UPC code. And a bunch of these lines and things like this and this and it says isbin and then it follows it with this big long number which of course is the isbin number <laughs> which is redundant and it's an acronym therefore it is the redundant acronym syndrome syndrome kfc chicken kentucky fried chicken chicken but then again there's also chicken fried chicken which no one has ever been able to explain to me LPG, LPG gas, liquid propane gas gas. And again, I would, I would argue and say that that actually makes complete sense because there's several kinds of gas. Now, you could say it's LP gas, but people call it LPG. So it doesn't <clears throat> confuse me. You know, makes sense to me. Uh, NPR radio, National Public Radio, radio. 
uh, OPEC countries, which are countries that belong to OPEC, and of course OPEC is the organization of petroleum exporting countries. Um, RAM memory, which of course is random access memory. Memory. <laughs> ROM memory, which is read-only memory. Memory. Um, the SAT test, which of course is the scholastic aptitude test. I'm sorry, scholastic assessment test. Test. Although it says your aptitude in parentheses, so I think they're both acceptable. A SAM missile, surface-to-air missile, missile. Start talks, start treaty. TWA Airlines, which of course is Trans World Airlines, Airlines. UL Laboratories. We hear that one a lot. Of course, the L and UL stands for laboratories. Um, USGS Survey. Heard that one before. United States Geological Survey. Survey. Uh, the VAT tax, the value added tax. Tax. <laughs> And there are some other ones, and including some obscure ones such as ADD disorder, which is attention deficit disorder disorder, uh, and so on. Or COBOL language. There's a computer language called COBOL, COBOL language, which of course is common business oriented language. Language. And VIN number and a VGA adapter, which again, go without saying, despite the fact that I just said them. So, there's a name for that. There's a name for that, redundant acronym syndrome. And now the question simply is, is it wrong? Is it wrong to use a redundant acronym syndrome situation? And I would argue that it's not wrong in spoken speech. Um, but there are people out there who trip on it. So, you know, I've also had people who literally have written me emails and said, Steve, would you please stop saying that you went or someone goes to say, they said, I said this, he said that. Then I went this and he went that. And they go, that's incorrect. It's incorrect. Oh, okay. Did you understand what I was saying? If you understood what I was saying, it was correct. I'm simply trying to convey information here. If you understood it, it was correct. The problem is the fact that in your mind, you turn it into a problem. Problems at your end, not at my end. There's an old, old story about two priests walking in an old country and they're not supposed to speak to women and they're not supposed to interact with women because they're supposed to just focus themselves on their spiritual pursuits. And as they're walking down the road, they come to a, a river that they have to cross and there's a woman standing there who's wearing a beautiful, expensive dress that she cannot get wet. And one of the priests looks at her and simply walks across the river, getting wet in the process. And the other priest looks at her and says, excuse me, are you worried about crossing the river because you will get your dress wet? And she says, yes, I can't get this dress wet, but I have to get across the river, it's urgent. And he says, would you like me to carry you? And she says, oh, would you? And he says, yes, I would. And she said, please do. He picked her up and he carried her, put her on the other side of the river, joined his other priest friend, and they went walking, both of them with wet feet. And the first priest was very, very silent, quiet, gloomy, brooding about something as they walked for miles. And finally, the second priest says, excuse me, I, I'm just curious, why are, you, why are you so upset? Why are you so worried? He says, we're not supposed to, Talk to women. We're not supposed to interact with women. It, it, it distracts us from our studies. And he says, okay. And he says, you picked that woman up back there. And he goes, you know, I picked her up and put her down and 30 seconds later. You've been carrying her ever since. So that, my friends, is what I have to say to the you who complain about the redundant acronym syndrome syndrome. Problem's not mine, it's yours. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. I would rather have 30 minutes of wonderful than a lifetime of nothing special.